Hi there, hello fellas. Welcome back. This is Frankie Day at Frankie Day Models. Okay guys, I've got a, a group build entry that I'm going to be doing for Frankie Day Models. Uh, it's going to be a Vietnam group build. Anything that served back in Vietnam, armor, ships, choppers, aircraft, amphibious craft, anything to do with the figures. I imagine all these uh, categories are mostly uh, are, are pretty welcome for this special group build. Okay guys, <clears throat> the commander in chief and uh, executive officer, the guys that's running this uh, that's running this beautiful uh, group build we got going here, the Vietnam group build, uh, Mr. Steve Mot Motram, is that how you pronounce your name sir? I hope I got it right. And Michael Booth. Uh, both these gentlemen are, are going to be the host of the Vietnam uh, group build. Okay guys, as you can see what I'm going to be entering in. What's Vietnam without a, a Huey Chopper? UH 16s I've seen a lot of these in Vietnam. Every day and night. You're going to hear them miles away. And uh, bringing this out for the special build, it, it, it's taken me back a long time ago. And uh, I was very fortunate I didn't have it as bad as the United States Marines and the 25th Infantry and the 3rd Marine Division. They had it really bad. And uh, I went and joined the Navy and I still, and I still went in country. And uh, we were um, on that first ship I was on was uh, before, I, before I got on the carriers or anything like that. I was on there for a very short time. It was a, was the LST, USS Krishna, right off Van Toy, Vietnam. I used to be a coxswain on a mic boat. You just take it from the from the LST from the ship. She was a tr floating transit ship, that's what she was. And uh, that was my duty station for a long time before I got transferred on board the USS Coral Sea. And um, and I was a coxswain on the uh, on the first division deck force on the boats of the mate. And uh, we, I was on the uh, mic boats with LCVPs, personnel carriers, you call them. We used to take mail, provisions, bring back a lot of beer. Back in the days, we drank a lot of Falstaff beer. Saturated full formaldehyde. I'll tell you one thing, it packs a buzz with one hell of a headache in the morning. <laughs> like, remember one time we had a couple of choppers on the forecastle one time. It was a. Uh, I believe it was an H1, H21 workhorse, and another one was a, a Choctaw. And they had oxygen bottles there. These guys would get so hung over drinking that darn nasty beer, they hit that oxygen bottle, put a mask on, and turn on the, uh, the knob, and hit that thing a few times, and beautiful, headache's gone. But uh, they got in trouble for that. So that was, this chopper's bringing back a time years ago, guys. And um, so this is going to be uh, my entry for Mr. Mr. Matri, Mr. Booth's Vietnam build. I'm going to start probably working on this right now. I'm going to have a little uh, gander at the kit, guys. I never built one of these before, but wait a second. Let me track that again. Yes, I have. Back in the early 19, late 1960s, around 67, 68. That's when I think this model came out, but it wasn't in its entirety as, 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 uh, as one chopper. It was, it was known as the visible Huey Chopper. And it had a motor in it and that big old blade would swing around. I remember that quite well. And uh, so this here is just like it. It's probably got the innards of the same thing and the mechanism which turns the blade. It's probably there. Pop a motor in it and there you go. But um, but this thing will make a nice uh, a nice entry for this special build, fellas. And uh, I'm, I think that Mr. Mushroom, Mr. Booth, and everybody will prove that it could be any better or any sweeter. And besides, I haven't built a chopper a long time, so I got three, th three going. I got three burning right now. I got the Whitley, the new Electric F3H Phantom, and I mean Demon. Now we got the, the Huey Chopper, and also got the uh, 101st uh, anniversary of the Royal Air Force with my Blinton bomber, and actually it's four burning. So I'm gonna be busy beaver for a long, long time. So it's not gonna be a foot race with all these builds. So I'm gonna work one for a while, put it back, let it dry, grab the other, go so far, hop on the Whitley, give it a paint job, let it sit for a while, 
come back and um, hop on the uh, Huey or hop on the, the Demon or hop on the uh, Blenheim Bomber or get get something shaken. So anyway, guys, enough talk and uh, less chatter and uh, more action with the uh, with Chopper. Okay, guys, this I got this at Smitty's Hobby Shop. You let me have it for seventy dollars cash. We'll bring up the uh, camera a close so you can see this. This was from an estate sale. This is what I'm talking about, fellas. Give a little crow like me. It was time for me to be food for him to leave this world. All my kits are going to his estate. So keep the plastic going and share the love. I like this idea. I'd rather do this by donating my models to a hobby shop so they can sell for great fellows like you guys out there and like me too. They can buy these buildies. So I bought this at Smitty's Hobby Shop. I think I got this about two years ago during Chopper Madness. I gotta get that video shaken up. And so I cannot find a better candidate than this wonderful uh, UH-16 Bell Huey gunship. And it's massive scale of uh, 124. This is big. I remember the last one I had, guys. This thing was uh, was huge. It was colossal. It was big. And for the love of life of me, I'll never know whatever happened to, to its whereabouts. I imagine it probably got broke, got lost, or something when I was overseas. And a lot of my models got taken over by my younger brothers and stuff. I think they got custody of it. And what they did with it, Lord only knows. Okay, guys, we're going to take this chopper, we're going to open this bad boy up, and we're all going to take a gander at it. I'm going to go back to uh, nostalgia time of 1967. And uh, so we're going to swing this bad boy right here with Vox off here. This thing's in pristine condition, very pristine. I examined it before when I first bought it and looked at it, and I said this is a very nice kit. Okay, guys, typical monogram box right here. And we're going to bring this camera. Incidentally, uh, uh, gentlemen, this this might take up two videos. So, uh, one of my one of my great uh, comment commentators on the uh, commenters on uh, I believe either my Whitley or my uh, Sky Warrior video said you'll help me with editing some software. So I'll be heading his direction so he can kind of school me in a little bit and get me back into the millennium, so back in the good old days. And uh, so we gotta roll with the flow. Okay, we'll roll with the Huey right now. Okay, guys, here's this box. Typical uh, reboxing, reissued kit. As I remember back in the back in the '60s, the kit never had boxes like this. It was all one box. I don't know. I don't think this is a reissued kit. This may be uh, a vintage kit. That's how big it is, guys. This big girl right here is a massive, as you can see right here. Oh, good gravy, 20 inches, 20 and a quarter inches long. So I imagine that road is probably 22 feet long. This thing is big, it's massive, and it's had some beautiful looking panel lines on here. For an ancient kit, this thing will it washes up like a kid in the candy store. This kit's ancient, fellas. But for an ancient kit, it's only one of its type in the world. And uh, for the love of life, I don't know why I didn't start this thing a long time ago. Well, I guess I had to take a, a, a beautiful group build like the Vietnam group build to get this thing shaken. And uh, has a Huey chopper. Has a serial number right there. That's funny, back in those days, there's, any, there's hardly uh, any ejection pin marks. Yeah, there's a little bit in there, not very much. But in the interior, there isn't any where it'd like to be seen. I imagine this thing has a built up interior pitch inside the shell inside here. Okay, guys, I'm beginning. <clears throat> I'm trying to get this camera focused a little bit so we can. I'm just trying to judge the, uh, the, the, the subject that, that'll fit the screen on this little tiny monitor right here on my, on my camera right here. And as long as I keep this perspective, I'll be okay. Guy, so guys, please excuse me, you can't get too close to stuff because it'll obscure everything. And, and there's something you need to see, we'll zoom in. Okay, in the beginning, right here, we're gonna take a look at the instructions. Now these are ancient instructions, I'd say this is a 90s kit. This is reissued back in the 1990s. I bet it is. 
No. I was wrong. I stand corrected. 2001. So this kit is reboxed and reissued. At that time. Copyright 2001. All rights reserved. Made in USA. How about that? I like that. Okay. Tells you the history of the chopper, which I know very, very much about. And quite familiar. I run them all the time. And they're a beautiful chopper, guys. I'll tell you, they are a very beautiful chopper. They're not... Uh, they're, they're very dependable. They're a utility chopper and gunships. Everything. Yep, I was right. Right here is the interior. They'll fit inside the shell of both fuselage has in the chopper. And you got a very beautiful interior with call out color call out. On the instrument panel you get decals. So you got a decal right here that fits on here. Oh boy, Panzer Bill's gonna love this. They got some crew figures on here, a pilot. I didn't know that. So far one pilot. I wonder if there's any more goes with this. And uh, step one is the construction of all these. Yeah. One. Seventy-one. Yeah. This thing's really cockeyed. The instructions are. Then one continued. Oh, okay, right over here, guys. We'll take a look at. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. Now we can go in a little bit. I get brave a little bit. There we go. Oh, okay. I was kind of confused right here. See the interior right here? Everything is all done. That's why I looked back while I go and didn't see no construction. But I know going well. That's not all. All one big unit. There. It's already put. Together. It's already uh, been formed. That's all kit made by kit. Oh, I see what's going on now. I follow it. Everything is put together for you. You had the bulkhead back here, and you had your top of your roof frame. And step one is still continue up here on the other side. Okay, guys, I'm so used to building uh, the Asian Brothers instructions, you know, and it's kind of kind of it kind of confuses you a little bit in this perspective. And uh, you got your front right over here. You got your top nose frame right here fits here. And you got all your formers right here that fit. And all dark gray callouts. I want to give you a FFS code. Nope, dark gray. I know exactly kind of gray to use. Next thing, the fiber gray. Okay, we're gonna move over to step two. In the instructions. Okay, guys. Uh, step two is the rotor assembly. You have the hub connector top right here. It fits. I guess it sandwiches in between the rotor blades. And, the rotor, and uh, I guess the mechanics of that is painted chrome and uh, silver and painted all drab. Hub connector is chrome. I got chrome paint. I got a better idea than that. I'll, put, I'll, I'll cover that with foil. And I'll just cut out the foil where the foil doesn't need to be at. So the rotor assembly so far looks like about four pieces here. And you got your rotor, you got your main rotor half mast right here. I think it's probably a counterbalance right there. Exactly what it is. It fits on top of your rotor. And it shows you right here the installation of it. Right over here. Which is the, the bob where the boss goes through. And, uh, and then a step two is the conclusion. It has the motor right here too, the engine, the transmission. As you can see, on the transmission, you got all the parts there. There's about 11 parts to complete that assembly. So it's got some goodies inside here. It, it sure allows a lot of good painting and a lot of weathering and a lot of, a lot of washes too. Heck yeah, a lot of washes. Like I said, this thing will love washes like a kid eating candy in the candy store. Okay, step three, engine window assembly. Okay, guys, I guess we're getting really to it. 
So I really, uh, on the window assembly, uh, I guess you can put it in and mask them off. That's exactly what I'd be doing to this bad boy. I'm just going to follow suit with these uh, with transparents and pieces. I'm going to use a 5 minute epoxy. I'm going to epoxy them in. I'll let them dry. And then I'm going to mask those bad boys off. We'll time the airbrush this thing all of drab. And uh, no fuss, no muss. Everything's done. This will be a beautiful build. I can see that. Okay, guys, the step five right here. It's got uh, the weapon and door assembly. A lot of them were, uh, and now they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, door gunners on these things. Some had seven millimeters to use. Those seven millimeter, uh, like a Gatling gun. The <coughs> same ones used on Spooky and also Pup the Magic Dragon. A lot of them had mid 14s. Those guys just sat on the seat and shot out the window. But this thing here is all Mac the This is a 7 millimeter. And also, you got a rocket uh, launcher on here, too. So, like most toppers are back in the era in time, I remember they were, they were pretty well loaded up to the nines uh, with ammunition. You use them as medi vacs, transports, everything. They were a very beautiful airplane that Bell Aircraft Company made. And they're very well affectionately loved by us Vietnam vets. That's why when that group build came up, I said, heck, I want to get involved with this. And I cannot find a better candidate than this beautiful chopper right here. Okay, guys, the decals, I don't know. Let me see if I can hook the decals up, because this is the first time I cracked this kit. This was a guy a couple of years ago. We're going to go with the plastic parts, have to get the decals reviewed. Oh, beautiful. I'm in there somewhere. Okay, guys. For the beginning of the of, of the millennial millennial year, construction's over there. The shells there. Okay, here's the decals. Decals look that pretty nice. Typical reveal, I mean typical monogram decals. 2001. These are not choreographed. These no. These are. I, I think these are just regular old heavy decals. Look pretty heavy. Yeah, they're pretty heavy old uh, decals. So what I've got to do is, uh, once they're applied to the model itself, a lot of Walters will bring that down. A very nice decals. And they're heavy, guys. They're good decals, but they're on the heavy side. Alrighty then. We'll put the decals side of the instructions so I know they're going to get harmed. Put the instructions over here. Okay, guys, we're going to go with the sprues right here. Okay, we're gonna back this camera up a little bit so we can get a, a good uh, a good overview of the uh, sprues as I pull them off the out of this here box. Okay, gentlemen, we'll start out uh, with the port side and the fuselage. This fuselage is, is in two halves, and uh, like I said, this thing is very very detailed, and this thing will take washes like you will not believe. This thing is just aching for detail, and there's a lot of not too much flash on this thing. As old as this kid is, I was surprised that the uh, that the molds really held out right. These things they didn't. Uh, at that time, I can remember when I was I bought this in a ship store, and I was a when I was bored to the risk any, and I sent it home so I could work on it someday. It was the visible uh, uh, Huey chopper, and uh, they only made so many of them. They they're very limited uh, production, and they quit. They haven't been seen since since 2001. Now. They don't make this no more. Perhaps they might bring it out someday. And Val Drury may get their hands on it and may release it in their boxing. You never know. I know one thing for certain, molds ain't thrown away. They're kept somewhere. Somebody's got them in the closet somewhere and they just drag it out and, re and redo the whole kit and put it in their boxing. Like they always do. Okay, that concludes uh, the, star the port side of the fuselage. Here's the starboard side of the fuselage. And... Uh, it too is just a detail.